G'day guys, welcome to the first official video with the Troopy, where I'm going to do some changes to it. And as you can see, I've already done a few things to it clearly from this angle you're looking at now. Now half the stuff I've done already, the other half I'm going to do during the recording of this video. And I'm prepping the Troopy for a trip which I'm taking off on in two days time with the kids. It'll be the first Troopy adventure and I'm so looking forward to it. But there's some things we need to do to make this Troopy more of my own, put my touches to this troopy. These changes aren't drastic, these are all pretty much DIY so far, and later on we will continue on modifying this troopy. But for now, let's get into what we've got in store this time around. There's a bit going on here, so stay tuned. The Troopy is currently registered as an 11-seater. However, we can only fit 10 people in here. Driver, passenger at the front, and eight seats in the rear. We're gonna go from a 10-seater down to a six-seater. And by doing so, we're gonna remove this bucket seat and this bucket seat here, or bench seat, sorry, the bench seats. We're gonna remove the two rear bench seats and create a six-seater. All the bolts that I'm taking out, I'm gonna put back in. And these seats I'm not chucking out, I'm actually gonna keep them. Well, I think we can all agree that the blank canvas of the Troopy has just become a lot bigger by removing those seats. But not only that, we can now easily access the sides here. In here, we have the jack. And just viewing at the amount of space that's behind these panels here is huge compressors, power systems, water, all kinds of things can actually be tucked into these little nooks here or behind these panels. And they're huge panels. Like this is just the perfect vehicle to, to just do stuff to. There's just so many opportunities and moving these two seats has just become even more vast. The new number plates, Ragnarok. Let's not get confused with the Marvel movies, got nothing to do with that. I'm not a fan of superhero movies. This is to do more with my Scandinavian heritage. I'm surprised that plate wasn't taken. As you can see, we've turned the Troopy from the aquarium into more of a limousine. Well, from the outside, it might look like a limousine, but definitely not on the inside, that's for sure. But what I'm referring to is all the glass that's on the Troopy. There's so much glass on the Troopy. It's all the way around. How many windows are there actually? Too many to count. So when we were sitting in it, before the window tinting was done, it was like you're sitting in a fishbowl. That's what the missus called it anyway, the big fishbowl. The tinting has made a huge improvement. Not just for privacy, but also just not being so damn bright on the inside. If you want to ask me what type of tint I put on, I honestly have no idea. I just got my mates and to do it from west side this guy here looked after me on price of course mates rates now ant only uses the good stuff i know that i've got his tinting on the wife's car my hilux which i got rid of the 79 and now this as well now one thing i've always fancied in vehicles are vinyl floors and in the work, mate, well, as you know, we've got vinyl floors, so it just makes it so much easier to get the sand out. Especially when you've got a full drive, because in carpets it just sticks, and I've got that problem in my 79. It's just layers and layers of sand. That said, I'm still going to put floor mats in. The vinyl floor is quite slippery, uh, even with or without shoes on. My feet slip a bit, and I don't like that fact. When it comes to floor mats, I prefer either the genuine ones or ones that have these little holes so you can lock your floor mat in. That's definitely one thing that I find very useful. Staying on vinyl. Vinyl seats are fantastic, right? They definitely do have their benefit. But vinyl seats, you sweat like a pig. When it's hot, your skin sticks to these seats. On a long drive, Last thing you want to be doing is peeling your skin off the seats 
or having a full on wet sweaty back. So what I've done is I've gone some run of the mill genuine sheepskin seat covers. Now these aren't custom made by any special company. These are just your run of the mill sheepskin covers. They cost me about 250 bucks, but they will make such a difference. As you can see, I've spent a bit of coin on some mount, mounting system here. These are ram mounts, they're quite expensive. Uh, I've got the same kit in the 79 and it works pretty good for me where you just drill it into the dash. So <laughs> not something you want to do on every car. The next mission is to get a dash mash, dash mash, a dash mat. Everyone knows what a dash mat is, but what we're going to do is we're going to carefully cut a hole so that we can get these mounts to come through it. And then we can hide these ugly screws because I know that some of you are saying, why didn't I use black screws? Doesn't matter when you're gonna put a dash mat over it. Or a dash mash. Dash mash. What the hell's a dash mash? Oh, not a workout. <sighs> Last time I did this, I tore a steering wheel cover. Is it even? Not really. Too late now. Let's talk tires. So for the Troopy, I've gone with 33 inch tires. So 285, 75, R16. I think I got that right. Yeah, I did. Roughly 33. It's probably more like a 32.8 or something. Something thereabouts. Legal size as well, by the way, without having to do any engineering or anything. One thing I noticed with these tires. Now these are the Max's Razors. You guys know I'm familiar with them. You know I love them. This is my six set across three vehicles so far. These are the MTs. So, same stuff that I'm used to. There's one difference though. I've noticed something on the sidewalls. They've actually added some stuff to the sidewalls. That's what I'm talking about right here. You see these extra grooves? There's, there's one, two, three. That one there was already there. So they've added these in, requested by the mines. That's pretty cool contacted them to find out what was going on. A, a mine site request, they have actually strengthened the sidewalls on the outside to help prevent punctures from stakes and stuff. It's pretty cool to see that they've actually listened to feedback and they've improved on their tire even more. I already think it's a great tire. Now it's supposedly stronger. This is a question to other Troopy owners out there. I've got a 33 inch tire wheel combo mounted on the back. How's the door gonna go? Makes a bit of noise when I'm driving, uh, especially when I hit a few bumps and corrugation. So I'm wondering, should I be concerned about this? Because if I do, then maybe I need to fast track the ideas of putting some kind of a rear bar on it, or maybe a custom make something. How about that? Maybe custom make something. Still have the door and the wheel attached, but have the rear bar taking the weight of it. That's what I'm thinking, so it opens up. And I don't think I'm gonna to add too much weight because this is steel. Let's talk about the roof rack, the new roof rack that's on there. So I went with the front runner option and the reason for that was because they offered the low one and that's what I'll put on here. I don't like roof racks sitting too high on a vehicle that's already very high. This looks way more sleeker. I actually really dig the look of this roof rack. On the roof, starting with, I got the Max tracks from the Hilux. I actually pinched them off the vehicle because I didn't get the price I wanted for my Hilux, unfortunately, but you get that. And we've got the Expedition rails around the both edges there. A shovel holder on that side and around this side we've got the ARB awning which I took off the previous roof rack and I just put it back on this one and down here I'm trying out these this is a new way of getting these boxes to sit on top which is pretty cool got these little corner brackets which sit down with this tie down loop it's a three quarter roof rack you can get one that goes the whole way I think they look pretty ugly so Therefore, I stopped there. And the previous roof rack actually stopped there as well. And it didn't actually look too bad, to be honest. It was just sitting a bit too high. And to get up on top of the roof rack, I've got the ladder installed as well. If you read the instructions properly, it's actually really easy to install. Attaches to behind that bit. That was probably the hardest bit was to get that off. 
So you have to take all this door trim off, get behind it, and it hooks around the top up there behind the seal, so the door still seals nicely. There is one question that I'm anticipating. It's regarding, am I gonna chop the roof on my Troopy and make it into the ultimate tour with a pop top? The answer is, most likely, I'm leaning towards it, so I'm probably 70% going to chop it, 30% not going to chop it, and that is why I've put this roof rack on it, because I wanted to make absolute sure that that is the path I want to take later on, because once you chop that roof, that's it. There is no turning back. You're committed. Therefore, I need to make absolute sure. I've got some trips coming up, one in particular very soon with the kids. We're gonna camp out of the troopy. We'll probably use swags, but then I'll do a couple of solo trips as well just to work out how I'm gonna live out of this troopy. But it's all gonna come down to my concept of having a two-person, three-person slash four-person tourer. That is the question, and that is something that's still bothering me a bit as to how I'm going to achieve that, because there's many different ways of doing it, and doing the trips and using it and experiencing it is the only way I'm ever going to find out. So stay tuned for that. This one's more of a question about the mirrors. Now these mirrors are super, super duper tiny. And I kind of get that because this vehicle doesn't have like a big tray on the back, so it doesn't need to be further out to look around it. But I'm thinking about putting similar mirrors that are on my 79 series on this vehicle. Now I have two questions. If I do, how far should I put it forward? So if anyone else has done it. And the second question, should I even do it? I'm in two minds. Well, that is about all the mods I've done so far to the vehicle. And now we're ready to head off. In fact, I'm heading off tomorrow as I'm recording this section right now of this video. So wish me luck, people. I'm taking the kids out for the first spin in the 78 series Land Cruiser Troopy. We'll see how we go. Stay tuned for that one. It'll be up in a couple of weeks time, I think. Until then, I'll see you next week.